is a drawing of the layout of the buildings. I've been asked quite a lot of questions in the comments about the layout and people are getting a little bit confused because there's quite a few buildings. So I thought I'd just film this again. I have filmed this once before. I think it was in episode 12. Now we have been given a map, plan, drawing of the layout of the town from the arc which was found in the archives in the National Archives in Paris and this is our town and this dates from 1673 and it's really interesting because our buildings are featured on this I mean if you can see at the top center is our church Now this is not to scale although it's very well laid out and this is really exciting Behind the church there, you can see a drawing of the chateau. So I'm going to go into this in a lot more detail. I'm going to colour in various parts such as the river and the roads so that it will become clearer. But it even has a key on the side here. Oh, I'm sorry, I'm trying to film in the light. It even has a key to the side here with various letters denominating different things around the town. So I'm now going to point out a few things on this map that are really interesting. And this map even features the well that we found a little while ago. It features the alleyway that we walked down and the shared well at the end of the alleyway. So I will show you that in detail. But the layout of this is incredible. And this was drawn by somebody who was 73 years old in 1673 this is when the Louis the 14th the Sun King was on the throne now Louis the 14th was also known as Louis de Bourbon now the prince, the Spanish prince, who lives in the chateau behind us, is also of the Bourbon family, the Bourbon Palmer. So they must be related, probably very remotely, but they must be related, the royal blood. Uh, Louis the Fourteenth reigned for 72 years, I believe. He was one of the longest reigning monarchs. Um, and he reigned for 72 years. So when this map was drawn in 1673, he'd been on the throne for 30 years, but he was going to reign for another 42 Now it's amazing to think that we've watched the programs on Versailles, the history of Versailles. Um, which he famously built and the costumes and those times that those people were living and our buildings were already in existence on this map or the majority of them so I'm going to show you this in a lot more detail the person who drew this when they drew this was age 73 in 1673 so they would have been born either 1599 or 1600 which is incredible so this map is 350 years old and that person was 73 years old when they drew the map and they must have known the town extremely well in fact they must have lived in the town i would imagine 
There's even details on the buildings, names of buildings, details of the gardens. So I think they must have known the town extremely well and they could have lived in one of these buildings. I was given a copy of it on an A4 piece of paper. So I've blown it up onto an A3 size or two A3 sizes actually. Um, and you can probably see there's a little join down the middle. Now I'm going to pick out different aspects of this individually so that you can get an idea of what we're looking at and what was there then and what is there now. Now I'm filming this while my new electricity supply is being fitted. The power is off so I'm filming it in the front window so there may be a little bit of traffic noise. I can't avoid that at the moment. I've really struggled this week with a very bad internet connection and the power being on and off to put out any vlogs whatsoever so I've been working on this little one for a while and let's hope it all goes according to plan anyway firstly you can see that I've coloured a little bit of it in so firstly what I've done in the blue is where the river flows now bear in mind that this isn't to scale this map and it isn't exactly in the right places Someone has drawn this in 1673. There were no aerial views at the time. And this is not a proper map. This is their impression of the town layout. Although it is very good and very detailed, things are not exactly in the spot that you would necessarily expect to see them. And they're not necessarily in the right scale. So anyway, I have filled in where the river is in blue. And I have drawn the high street in a sort of a gold colour. That's the one running through the middle there. And I've also drawn what would have been the town wall, as far as I can make out from this map, surrounding the town, on which there are three gates, and I'll point those out in a moment. And then surrounding that town wall, in green, is what would have been the moat. So it was a moated and walled town with three entrance gateways, fortified gates, a lot of turrets, towers around the wall. So it was a pretty secure place in those days. And then there were moats and rivers as well. Anyway, let's zoom in a little bit on certain areas of it and I'll point out what we can see. Firstly, in the centre of this map, oh, if you can hear a beeping, I think they may well have just switched the power back on, but it's probably only for a moment. Anyway, in the centre of this map, marked A, as you can see above it, is the church. Now, this was a 12th century church. It was sacked in the 1500s by the Huguenots, and a lot of it was burnt, so it's been rebuilt since then. Well, I've come around to the front of the church, and as you can see, it's very well depicted on the map. This is exactly what it looks like from the front. And then you can see that behind that is the chateau off in the distance. You can only just see it through the trees. So it is sort of where it says so on the map. I just see it in the distance there. And then at the side here, this is depicted as the river. And it does show it coming through a, a sort of a weir with the mill house on the side of it. But I don't believe that this is the mill house that was in existence then. This looks like of an older style. So what we would probably call sort of Georgian. Probably early 1800s, late 1700s, early 1800s sort of style. I mean this is derelict, it, it did have a big fire apparently years back and it's been left like this but there would have been a mill on this site anyway um, and those buildings there I believe there's possibly part of the stables that are marked on the map um, which again I shall point out to you 
I mean, these beautiful cedars up here. I don't think they would have been there in 1673, but they've been there a long time. But yes, then we have a bridge across to the church, which is depicted slightly smaller on the map. Although those stone pillars underneath it look pretty old to me. And then this side of the church here, where the river goes around. This is how it would have been. Um, I mean, the, the church was sacked and burned in 1500s by the Huguenots, I believe. Um, so most of it was rebuilt, but there are still bits of it remaining from the 12th century. And some of the buildings around it would have been from that same time. So this would have been the rebuilt version in 1673 and this is obviously taking prominence in the town and if you look to the left of that you can see the little bridge across the river there that is the little stone bridge which I have shown you is goes up to the entrance gates of the chateau now this is the little stone bridge This is the back of the church and there is the chateau. The gates are open at the moment because there's lots of work going on. And this is the old stone bridge that was on the 1673 map and probably had been here not longer than that. And that is looking towards my garden, just around the corner there. And then back round to the square, and then this is around the other side of the church. And that's where it goes round to where I showed you the front of the church. You can see that behind the church, or to the side of the church there, is a picture of the chateau. Now that is the latest version as it is now, but it would have only been built probably around 30 years or so before this map was made and if we zoom in there again this is marked as B on the map especially if we look at the gateway which is in the front of the chateau and the roofs of the chateau this would be the version as it stands now Now. And in front of that, you can see that the chateau was moated. The green is the chateau moat. Now there's a key on the side here as well. Haven't been able to identify everything on here. And unfortunately from the copy, the A and B is missing. But we've just seen those. That is the church and the chateau. And then there are the three doors which are C, D and E, which are the three entranceways. And they are on the boundary wall. I'll have a look at this one first. And that one is gate C. And then slightly further round, we can see a bit bigger and more fancy, gate D. And then even further around we can see gate E which looks very fancy indeed and this was actually called the Port de Bourges now also on the left of that where that picture is of that gate we can see the person that wrote this it says Francis or Francisette Jacquemet and you can see it says that it was drawn in 1673 at the age of 73 years old. Now to help to clarify the map slightly, 
I just showed you the port de Bourges, the door to Bourges or the gate to Bourges, which was the main entrance to the town. And you can see coloured in a goldy colour is the high street. Now I'm trying to keep this as steady as possible. But as you can see, this is the Porte de Bourges, the main gate into the town. This is the high street. And guess what this is? This is our end barn. Well, where I'm standing now is outside the gates to our end barn. And this would have been the Porte de Bourges. This would have been the main entrance into the walled town. Now there's quite a large area. I'm standing in right in front of our gates, looking towards the river. There's quite a large area. Now there would have been a wall around this side of the town. And the entrance gates, the Porte de Bourges. And there would have been a moat. And then the moat eventually was turned into the sewer system under the roads. So the moat would probably have been mostly where the road is, going around the town. This is our end barn. And then our back barn is also shown. Obviously the attention to detail. It's amazing. You've seen this side of it finished already. But then we've got the final pieces of guttering have all been fitted. And the There's various other buildings around a courtyard. Some of which are still there or have been rebuilt and some of which are no longer there. This one I don't think is there. And it also shows part of our garden so I'm going to have to move the camera now to show you the other part. But at the same time if I can move it Briefly, this little bit here is the alleyway between our houses and the little house. And just at the end here, I need to move the camera slightly, it actually shows the well that we discovered. Ah, what's going on here then? This is the alleyway between our side house and the little house or that used to be the little shop. But what's the interesting thing right. is this. Oh, how did you get in there? I kicked you. <laughs> ah, right. The Dandalusive. This the, is... The Dandalusive well. Oh, you're joking. No. But this is not our house. But this is our actual. This is joint access. This is shared tone. Obviously we've never been through here before. There's a window here, Tony, from next door's house. This is our old doorway. Yes. Wow. This is the end room. This is the arrow slit uh, here. Yeah. And that's the well. Oh, that's a proper well. Yes. Wow, so that's why is that not in our bit then? Because that's somebody else's garden well, here. That's been that's been blocked up. This of our house here. This is the side of our back barn, the one that's currently sheeted over, and then that wall that we're looking at, by the well, is as far as our passageway goes at the side of our barn. Obviously, this is access into the garden of the side house that's attached. But wow, I can't get near it because there's oh, there's loads of bushes in the way. Ah, oh, look at the old stone on that. And it's got a huge chain. Wow, that really is an old well. A huge chain with the big handle. I'm trying to show you all this whilst keeping the camera steady <laughs> and show it as clearly as possible. There's so much detail on this drawing but I have had to zoom in so that you can see this. Now this is the alleyway from the main road 
This is the little house here on the corner of the alleyway, and these are our properties along here. This is the alleyway, and this is the well. It looks just like a little donut. But this is the well actually shown on this map in 1673, which I think is amazing. So this is the alleyway. This is the little house here. And there is a house attached immediately behind it. And then if we move very slightly further down the high street, let's just move that for you. Past the little house. I'll just wait for that to stop moving. Okay, so we've moved just past the little house which is here and the now non-existent one which is there, which is now a garden, which is probably this part of point we believe the little house here, which could have been here at that age. We think it had an adjoining building, which is now where that little garden is which belongs to the house behind the little house. So where the little house is now on this corner, next to it now, there is a garden entrance where this shows another building. We, we had thought that there might have been a previous building attached to this. And we are thinking that the age of the little house, when we go up into the roof and we look at the beams, is probably consistent with that being the one that is shown on this drawing but the other one has since disappeared and this shows the layout with the sideways house behind it which again is a still a very similar layout to where it is now so this is the alleyway this is the little house here and there is a house attached immediately behind it and then if we move very slightly further down the high street. Let's just move that for you. Past the little house. So I'll just wait for that to stop moving. Okay, so we've moved just past the little house which is here and the now non-existent one which is there, which is now a garden, which is probably this part of this is part of it and there is still a house here but there's more houses shown which are no longer there now we are looking at the entrance roadway into the market what is now the market square um the haller would always have been there but on the 1673 map there would have been houses along this piece here now this is at the entrance to where the market square is so I'm going to move you along a little bit further because we're heading towards the market square. So this is still the main road here. These are the houses which are no longer there. There is a house this way which I think is now the cafe of which it has tables and chairs on a open area in the side of it here. Now, these buildings here are around the market hall, which is this building here is the market hall. And a lot of these are no longer there. I think some of these buildings have been knocked down and some on the other side of the square just there have been knocked down. But I think that this one in the corner here, these ones that were attached to the hall, are possibly still the ones that are there now. Look at this building here which is on the end of the hall which is the market hall and that definitely is medieval that definitely is on the map I shall show you where that is but also this building on the end here and also on the map this little bit here I think where these gates are is shown as a little roadway which would have been behind the houses that would have been on this part where the parking spaces now are and where there's usually tables and chairs out in the summer for the cafe restaurant here 
Obviously, if I turn the other direction, we can see that this is the road through to the chateau. That's definitely on the map. And I think that building here was also on the map. But if we then look towards this building here, I believe that where all these parking spaces are now, in front of these buildings, there were other buildings. So this marketplace would not have been anywhere near as big as this. I'm struggling with that. I might use it later if I see anything else. That... Right, I've taken away the magnifying glass. And we are now looking at... The market hall, which is this building here, and I believe that this is on the. I think that is a letter K, and it's referred to as the Isle, or we call it the Halla, Hall, and it's always it, this is a medieval building, so this would definitely have been here in 1673. It perhaps was called by a different name. But these little alleyways coming from the main high street into the hall are still there. There's one here and then there's a little road that you can drive into the square here. So those are still there. I believe some of these buildings are still along there. Well, let's move on slightly further and from the marketplace... Right, I'm going to do away with the circle for the time being. So, from the Halla here, which is the marketplace, and now these buildings are now part of the car park. This is an open area. But this little road here is still there. And these buildings have gone as well. This is part of the car parking area. Now, this road here... Is where that this is the little stone bridge I filmed this before and I will put a clip in here for you now this is the little stone bridge this little stone bridge leads across to the church now I need to get the other piece of paper to join it up so there is the church and then behind the church is the chateau So this little bridge, we can see my back garden. When we stand on this bridge and look this way, this is my back garden. And just where I'm pointing there, you can see a little, a little house. This, I believe, is in the neighbouring garden, the one beside me. And the, but there's also one at the bottom of our garden, which is exactly where the bend of that river is, which I feel must have been some sort of outhouse or latrine. Which is where that big pit was, which we've just filled in right by the side of the river there. Right, I'm on the path alongside the river and I'm... I am standing right in the very corner of my garden, looking towards the chateau grounds opposite us. And can you see another big wall over there? A huge wall with the tree growing out the top of it, just where the church spire is. If you look down to the bottom of that wall, where it meets the river, there are several archways. So I believe this is also part of where the watercourse came, which formed the moat for the chateau. So this was probably a drainage from the moat from the chateau, which was fed by the river on the other side of the chateau. And then obviously from here we can just about see, if I don't fall in the river, we can just about see the old stone bridge there, which is on the map. We're now looking at the back of the church, which I shall point out to you on the map. And that is the little old stone bridge, which is also shown on the map, which goes to the front gates of the chateau. And zoom in a little bit there for you. The bridge and the archways in the wall. So 
So if we move that page just over a, bit, a little bit further, we can see the rest of the garden as depicted. And we have the bend of the river, which at the time, I believe this was part of the part of the wall. This little bit is unclear. It definitely had this moat around the city. But you'll also notice that in the, my back garden is one of these lookout towers with a castellated top. And this is what we think has been converted into the bread oven because that's in exactly the right spot with our, where our bread oven would be. Another arrow slit there. Really? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Is it safe to go in, Tan? There's all cobwebs and things. I've never been in here again. There's yeah. about three foot of arrow leaf. Slit, yeah, look. It's wide for an arrow slit, but then... No, it goes like that. Yeah, I know what you mean. I'll just try and film it from the outside. But yeah, this, this wasn't purpose built for... Chickens, was it? Well, a, bit, a little bit overkill for chickens. I just went in there. I do. But it still looks out onto. Yeah, you know, it is a little yeah. bit, isn't it? Yeah. It still looks out onto the river side, doesn't it? Oh yeah. That's nowhere near as deep, though, is it? Oh. No, that's a that's like a little flower pot thing. What's that for? Weird. So this floor is very much like that other building. It's like part dirt, part cement tiles and things, isn't it? It's a bit strange. But we need to do something about that nasty big crack there. Yes. Oh, what's that? A bee's nest? Wasp's nest? Uh, something like that. Yeah. Obviously, it's dead. Oh, you cut me light off. But yeah, that's interesting. Look at that. Nothing in it at the moment, of course. But yeah, it's absolutely black in here. It's quite rotten. <laughs> but yeah, so how old is that fireplace? It's difficult to know. Hmm. Oh, look at that spiral on that roof of that Bridavon. That's actually very beautiful. And then there's like a tiled floor to it in there. Hmm. All right. Anyway, I'm coming out. But yeah, I definitely think this now, this is something other than a, just a bread oven house. So maybe this would account for the strange shape of this building. It's right on the river, which is where we would expect it to be. And it's on the bend of the river, so it would be a perfect place for a lookout. And it's pretty tall. I would imagine it probably would have gone further than this, but I think this has been reused. I think this was part of the original tower, which was part of the original defense wall, which would have gone along the side there. And where our barn is, just in front of that, would have been the main gate entrance. I'm going to walk around the town and film various parts of the town and then point them out on the map. Because it intrigues me. And some of the buildings on there are still there. And I'll point out to you exactly which bit would have been inside the wall. And that would have included not this property this property over here which 
I don't believe is the property that was on the 1673 map but the plot was very similar had a similar plot with the river going up the side of it I'm not sure that this weir was there at the time even though the wall does look very old we will have to investigate on the map if you look at that in relation to our side barn it's further around that side of the river and this is where we think our bread oven is now so here's our well here's our courtyard the buildings around the courtyard here's our side barn and then it's a little bit unclear on here this R depicts a river and I'm not sure if this bit is meant to be part of the wall or part of the moat and I think this might be the wall that might be the moat but it was definitely well defended and this little side barn is where we found that arrow slot that we couldn't work out why would you need an arrow slot well that's because you would check outside to see who's attacking you because if they can't get through this big gate where are they going to go? They're going to try and come around the side. So that's an arrow slot which was also watching out onto the main road. Do you remember when Tony found this and decided it was an arrow slot? But we weren't sure why. I'm at the back of the side barn at the moment. Obviously looking through this arrow slot out onto the river well since we've been given the map this makes perfect sense because obviously it looks out onto the river it's part of the side barn and let me take you outside so we can get our bearings Here is the river that flows round the back of our property. And then it flows past the side of this barn here, which is where the arrow slot looks out to here. Now, according to the map, where the river flows under the bridge there, on our side of the bridge, was the main gate into the walled town the, they called it the gate to Bourges and that is the Bourges road and that was the main gate into the walled town now this town from here had a wall all around it and it had a moat as well as well as the river so this would have been part moat part river so on the 1673 map this building this barn on the side was already here and we believe the back barn was also there and some other buildings in the same places of the same places as the ones that we have at the moment obviously the church was there that's been there since the 1200s.